Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning into the locker room today. I'm Alan Locker, and as I've said before, I grew up watching both As the World Turns and Guiding Light. I joined the PR department there in 1997 and remained working on both shows for 13 years before they went off the air. As I was stuck home in quarantine, I realized that I was missing my Guiding Light and Springfield family and thought some of you might be feeling the same way too. Today, we have a great show with one of your absolute favorite couples, Alan Michael and Lucy Spaulding. Please welcome Rick Hurst and Sonia Satra. Rick, Ooh, Sonia. Hello. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Um, oh, I will just start off Good. so all the fans all the fans know um, I had spoken to Frank Beatty. He was planning to join us. Unfortunately, he could not. And hopefully we can get Frank again another time. But how are you two doing? I appreciate you both being here. Absolutely. Oh, great. Absolutely. So fun to be here. This is great. I haven't talked to Rick in a long time. And it's nice to see you. And yeah, it's been, I've been really excited about this. <laughs> I, I wish I could have uh, videotaped, you know, Sonia popping in and seeing Rick and Rick seeing Sonia because oh. you guys hadn't seen each other for a long time. Yeah, it's one of those like, oh, my love, I missed oh, you so long. <laughs> oh, hi, all the way. Yeah, I know, virtual, lots of hugs, lots of virtual hugs. Oh, for an Italian, this is the worst, this is the worst thing in the world for an Italian. Um, <laughs> and the older I get, I feel like I become more Italian. Like, I'm, I'm half Italian, but I've, like, removed all the rest of my heritage. Like, my, my wife keeps saying, you do have German in you, you know, that I'm like, oh, <laughs> No, no, it's all Italian. It's like my, my accent comes back to when I was a kid. It's just, it's terrible. And of course, living in Georgia, I have to prove how New York Italian I actually am. <laughs> but, uh, I'm so glad that you did this. I really am. I've, I've been really yeah. looking forward to this. And um, it's so hard right now, you know, like, like not being yeah. able to have any kind of interaction. Um, it's nuts. Well, Amen. actually, I was, you know, I was watching your mayor on the news so much today and so impressed yeah. with her taking on your governor. Um, she's tough. Yeah. She's, tough you she's, know? A, she's a tough woman and, and yeah. you know, very smart protecting you all, I think, personally. I, absolutely. You know, I, I, I personally, you know, the thing that I find astounding is like, you know, what's the debate really? I mean, what is the debate here? Like, um, we'd like to keep our citizens here safe. You know, it's not about, hey, you know, you feel like my, no, 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 no. Look. It's human. That's all it is. Just be human. Yeah. Right. Step exactly. Back. A, a, a mask is not that difficult. No. But especially for a limited period of time. It's a hopefully right. not a life sentence, right. right? We all let, wore let, seat belts because it saved our lives. Yeah. We can yeah. actually wear the suit. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. But but that's, 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 we we wear, you wear a bike helmet. Place. You wear a bike helmet if you ride a bicycle, a motorcycle. Right. Helmet, exactly. You exactly. know, it, it's it's really to protect. But let's talk happier stuff. So, do you yeah. remember your first day at Guiding Light? I you do. Want to go first, son. <laughs> I do you remember ahead. my first day. I remember your first day. <laughs> you do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Go ahead. Because go ahead. we didn't actually have a scene the first day. I was a, no, we did a not. waitress on my first day, and I got to dump a bucket of ice onto a radio host. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> But you know, that was all at the same time where you were like trying to walk, hit your cues, hit your lights, remember people's names. And so dumping a bucket of ice seems like the most difficult thing ever. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. when? There. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One more time, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think that was me. I'm really sorry. Oh Lord, but yeah, that was an so, exciting right. oh, day. Yeah. My first day uh, was actually. And, do you, it was and Rick, do you know if how long Carl Evans had been gone before you showed up? Had he been? I don't remember in my head. Um, Carl was Evans for, was. I, I want to say a few weeks. Yeah, okay. a few weeks because I, I was on. I was on Days of Our Lives at the time. Uh, well, I was. Let's clarify. I was. Uh, I was let go from my contract on on days. Um, <laughs> Lucky for uh, us. And, Lucky for us. I know. I was yes, going to say there. But prior, prior to that, prior, and, and I was about to get married uh, in Texas. So my first day leading up to it, my first day was really about um, 
uh, I, I, booking the job, I got the job, I uh, got married two weeks later, went off on my honeymoon. So while I'm on my honeymoon, I technically call this my first day. Why? Because I'm in Paris, right? On my honeymoon. Great, great on my honeymoon. honeymoon. Great. Great. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we, we actually won the trip. We won the trip through a, a, a publicity thing that we had done and whatnot. And car, I, anyway, not to get into another story, but um, so we won the trip. We were out there in, in France, in Paris, on the left bank, you know, sitting in this, this wonderful restaurant called Cafe La Merlot. And it's, uh, and I, my, my French is terrible, but uh, Rue de Saint Gregor, I think it was. It's, but your um, memory is amazing street. that you remember the name. But of the street. street. But here's why. I'm we're sitting, you know, in, in Europe when you go out to eat, Americans, obviously Westerners, they they go out and eat very early, eight o'clock. Uh, that was our reservation. So they have literally a special room for the Americans, especially. And you know, my, Donna and my wife and I are are, are like four courses, rich yum food, wine, 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 you know, dessert, and we're like. Good. We've just had the most <laughs> amazing meal, toasted perfectly, and and I I I turn around for a second and I look at another table, and sitting at that table is Michael Zaslow. What? Oh just my God! Photo. Yes. <laughs> so Michael and his wife Susan, who both have passed away, uh, Michael and Susan, unbeknownst to me, frequented. Paris, they loved Paris. That was their favorite place to, to go uh, in Europe. And this particular restaurant was their favorite restaurant. I look over, knowing full well that I'm going to be working with Michael because he's playing my father-in-law. He's Blake's father. And I'm playing Alan Michael. So I'm going, I look at my wife, I go, it's Michael's ass over there. She turns around, she goes, look at that. Go say hello to him. And I was like, you of course, you're going to be working with him. So we're, you know, of course, my wife has no couple of glasses of wine. She's like, no, go, 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 go. I stand up, walk over to him. Now his back is to me. His wife sees me coming and his wife kind of gives her, you know, Susan gives Michael kind of like, you got somebody coming to say hello. And <laughs> she didn't know who I was either. And I said, excuse me, Mr. Zaslow. And he turns around and goes, uh, he says, I, he says, he figures, oh, this is going to be a fan. And I go, I said, the worst thing I said, I, I'm not a fan, but I, I, my name is Rick Hurst, and I'm going to be working with you. I'm going to be playing your son in law, um, Alan Michael Spalling, and replacing Carl Ty Evans. And his head snapped around, and he looked at me, and he goes, oh my God, what's the chances? He goes, sit down, that's going to be a line of life. And he was, couldn't have been, he couldn't have been sweeter and nicer. So, you know, I said, no, no, my wife and I are, we, we're here on our honeymoon and, you know, we just finished dinner and everything, but thank you so much. And Donna's over there in the back going, you know, waving. <laughs> and so that was that. So fast forward my first but, day. But, but can we just I talk said, about the coincidence of that? Yes, here's the coincidence Maybe. of that. My first day is with Michael and I have 13 scenes, okay? Now I come from Days of Our Lives and Days of Our Lives was, uh, let's just say, they had cue cards there, okay? And I wasn't a person, I saw all these people using cue cards. Matt Carey, you know, uh, Francis Reed was using them. All of the, you know, the, the radio people that came the first lines of television, they were using them. Um, and some other actors as well. And I just, they had my lines on there just because of those other actors would be having the scenes with me. So I'm looking, I'm like, you know, after a while I got used to it. So I get to their first day on Guiding Light and I'm like getting ready to go 13 scenes. I'm sweating bullets. I'm ready to go though. I'm like, I've studied, I've got my stuff to I'm working with Michael, I'm working with Sherry, I'm working good. And I look around at all cameras and I'm going, and I look at Michael and I said, Michael, um, good to see you again, obviously. Uh, <laughs> I said, wait, um, you, you don't have um, cue cards here, do you? And he was like, nope. And I went, oh, um, what if you, what if you go up on a line? He goes, wing it, five, four, three, two, and he he literally said, he, I pushed me out there, and I never used another cue card. I never, I, I swore them off. I never ever wanted to see them ever again. And I was, he made me so ultra prepared from that moment on. So that was my first. That, that is a That's great story. Great. That's amazing. Tony, who, who, do you remember who you had to screen test with? Me or, I screen tested with Rick. Oh, you yeah. did great. 
I did. And Rick, yeah. did you, did you pass the screen test? I did. I did. I did screen test. I actually was flown out. I was testing for two different uh, shows at the time. I was testing for World Turns to play Link, uh, which... Oh, um, yeah, yeah. With Jim somebody. Wilczek. Jimmy Jim Wilczek. Wilczek. Oh, wow. Good girl. Yeah. And um, it wasn't Martha uh, uh, playing... Heather, Heather, Heather Rattray, maybe? And I actually adored Heather. She and I got on really, really well, really fast. But... I tested with Sherry Stringfield. Oh, great! And it was it was a very comedic scene. Uh, it, it just kind of gave me. I was so used to like days being very, you know, overly soapy and you know, very highly dramatic and whatnot. So I was I looked forward to it, and I don't think anybody else was kind of bringing that sort of offbeat kind of approach to Alan Michael. This sort of you know, uh, you know, squirreliness that I could have, and that's me. So, uh, and Sherry loved it and dove right in and we were great. And uh, and that's the first time I met Locke Wallace, our- Oh um, uh, yeah, stage manager. Ah, oh, whoa, three. <laughs> uh, every, let, no let, me, that. let me just I had a line what? situation like you, Rick, though. 10 days in, I remember, um, because I had, I don't know, I talked to somebody and they were like, yeah, you could have 50, 60 pages. And I was thinking, holy crap, how on earth are you ever going to learn that? And my 10th day, I had 57 pages. <laughs> and I remember yep. having a scene with Justin, who you never know what exactly uh, you're going to get. Or well, what good, good, you're times. Get good times. Good times. <laughs> and he just looked at you. He just looked at you. And he then just he'd stare right <laughs> into you. <laughs> And then you'd be like, am I supposed to say something? Yeah. <laughs> I was standing in that diner and it was 543 and I'm thinking, I haven't the slightest idea what I'm supposed to say. And, you know, you just barge through the door and suddenly words came out of my mouth. And apparently they were the right ones. <laughs> and 10 pages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rick, I just, before I let this, uh, the questions are going by, are you wearing a Star Trek shirt? Somebody's asking. I am. This is actually. I am <laughs> so, somebody, somebody could tell from just the top that that's that a trekkie. Yeah, that's, so that's a trekkie. Yeah, I'm not that necessarily is really. a trekkie. This is actually I can I can honestly say and very proudly this is my son's shirt. Uh, <laughs> like, Dad, it doesn't fit me anymore. I'm like, oh great, I'm shrinking. Fantastic. Yeah. Not in the right way. Just like, <laughs> but yeah, it's a Star Trek T-shirt. So, who or what inspired both of you to become actors? You first. Oh, yeah. Before, so I was definitely not like one of those childhood actors. I didn't do that thing. I was playing tennis with my mom and some guy came up and asked if I wanted to do a local hair ad. He was a photographer. And so, you know, I was a teenager and thought that hair sounds hair. cool. Free hair, exactly. Free haircut, yeah. free shampoo. I'm in. <laughs> and it was really fun. It was it was kind of cool to do. And so then I went to college and while I was there, I was, you know, working in the dining hall because we didn't have a lot of money. And I thought, well, maybe in addition to the dining hall, I could get some part-time modeling work. So I looked at the back of the New York Times, which I don't recommend, especially not <laughs> years ago, <laughs> for modeling jobs. It's Treasure Lee, Coco. It's Treasure Lee. Exactly. Oh, wow. Did I get the runaround? So, you know, just give us $10,000. We'll make you a star or worse. And my mom, was, they're still out there, probably still in the New York Times, too. <laughs> but uh, my mom was like, this doesn't really seem good. And we didn't know anything about the entertainment business. But she had a friend of a friend of a friend in a Spanish news station who connected me to my very first agency. And I was there with my little portfolio looking for modeling work. And they had me read like a Pizza Hut script or something. Oh, and gosh. uh I was just like, okay, I can read. And uh, and then I started to go out for commercials. And I was just beginner luck. I was that counter girl. Look at the time. I did, I had my very first commercial was McDonald's. And then I did Burger King. And then oh, pizza. I did do a pizza commercial. So that is your first <laughs> commercial. My heart bleeds. Oh, <laughs> oh it was, but you know, that was, I think, the only reason why I got into it. Because I was like, well, I can do this, you know? After yeah. I went to LA and then I realized, oh, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. And I spent years getting rejected. 
in fact, I, but actually right after the first couple of commercials, I did screen test. My very first screen test was for Guiding Light from Mindy. Um, oh, wow. And, uh, I did not clearly get that role. Um, was that, was I, that, do you know? That was Barbara Crampton moment. Barbara Crampton got that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And then, Rick, I test, screen tested eight more times until I actually got Guiding what? Light. Yes. Not on Guiding Light. Eight, not, not yeah. eight. Not oh, oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. no, no. Because if you had been in that building eight times, Sonia, and I first time, like, hey, I'm Sonia Stucker. Oh, I am Rick Hurst. Nice to meet you. Like, where the fuck was I? Like, you know. Wow. Richard, no. I'm a bagel. Every, uh, uh, every time I auditioned for a soap, I went to the screen test, and I didn't get it. So great lesson of perseverance. <laughs> so yeah. beginner's luck, well, and well, then I if, had reality. If you had gotten Mindy, that would have been a great family. But I, I'd say you landed in a pretty darn good family, those uh, Coopers. Coopers oh, yeah. are awesome. Such <laughs> a great, oh, my God. I was blessed. To work You're with really, Justin and Rick, and oh man, it doesn't get much better. Frank, oh, the, all of them, they were all amazing. It was, it was so fun. It really was. Yeah. It, it really was. yeah. It, it's, it's serious. I mean, some really, I mean, Rick, you mentioned Sherry, and you worked with Molina. What were both of, they, both of them yeah. like? You know, uh, obviously, I, I've always been and I say this across the board, I've been fortunate to work with some really extraordinary ladies, uh, present company, absolutely included. Um, and so diverse, so completely different from one another. Um, they really are like just those, these, really three, are. these three that I did, you know, Sherry, Sonia, Sherry, was, Sherry was a, uh, Sherry was a buddy. Sherry was just like, we, we were, we were pals when we worked together. Like she was, the youngest broad I'd ever met in my life. <laughs> just, just the coolest, like, it wasn't something that she was like, oh, I'm an actress and I do that. She could give a crap. Like, when she was working, she was totally 100% focused, but Sherry was, as always, always was the type of person um, who, was, who struck me as, I wanna live my life. And I just so respected that and was in awe of that. Um, Melina in a different way, but Melina was also very, uh, very passionate. We came from similar, you know, backgrounds uh, ethnically. So we had that sort of, that fire between the two of us at times. Um, and and Mel was, Mel was in, in great, and still is to this day. I, I still, we still keep in contact. Our families are very, very close. Um, incredible businesswoman. Um, really understand sort of the, the whole, uh, the global world of the entertainment business, um, from from the creative side to the producing side and so forth. She's, she writes now, uh, she writes scripts and she's actually, um, you know, she produces. So, um, but I think both of them, they're just so willing to play, you know? Uh, and that was that was the thing that I adored most about them, and, and I have. I've been very, very fortunate that all of the all of the actresses that I've worked with, um, obviously, um, everybody just wants to jump in the pool, and it's about really trying trying to lift the other person up, make the other person look as best as possible, and understand where they're coming from, and not it's just about you, um, but that it's it's truly about how do we make the scene better, the couple better, the you know, and not from a not try to get into all of the, the politics of it, but moreover from what are we trying to present about it? And, and I think they both understood that as well as Sonia, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. yeah that's, something you brought to the table. I mean, you're extraordinary in that. You were just so generous and so giving. And you were, I mean, <laughs> couldn't have asked for like a, a better person to work with in terms of really the lifting you up. You did that every day. It was fun. <laughs> Since I know, you know, fans were definitely looking forward to Frank being a part of this. When Frank joined as Brent, did you already know that it would turn into Marion at that point? Do you, no. you recall? No, not no. at all. No. I think that came about, right, Son? I think it came yeah. about as the result of, of his performance. Yeah. And, yeah. and how, I mean, you know, having played villains, 
now, you know, even though I was, which is a, a scream that I was considered a, you know, a, a hero towards the end of my, my stint on God and light. Um, literally to, to see. Yeah, you did it. You did a lot of him. bad things. I, I, yeah. I was look, looking back at <laughs> yeah, researching I today. Yeah. You, 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 I mean, more fun. you always hear it's more fun to be the bad guy just because yeah. I guess it's all of the taboos that you, you look to that, that in real life you can't break. And to, to connect up with something that's, you know, part of your normal everyday life doesn't seem as exciting, uh, even though there is much to mention into it. I used to tell Frank the this and I'm like, dude, this is, you fall off the horse. Like when you had the, 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 the um, the affair with uh, with um, who did he have the affair? He had an he had an affair um, as his character briefly with Julie, right? Was it Julie? Julie, maybe. Julie. Uh, briefly, and like the fall from Good. grace. Like he was the the ultra hero, and Frank was just distraught about it. I'm like, dude, you have the opportunity to literally fall from grace and rise back up. I said it's the greatest moment you could ever want as a character. Oh, no, dude. It's not he just didn't get it, um, but but um, I think back to Frank. He he just had he embraced that that not he wasn't afraid to go forward and like uh, okay well I have complete justification as to why I'm doing what I'm doing you know playing playing somebody who would would you know violate and take away someone's innocence. Help me on this, Sonia. I was literally mm -hmm. thinking about trying to think about this. Was the rape, the first time for Lucy, I couldn't remember. Yes. In fact, I always that's why say, was so I think I was that's like, why it was oh, that virgin in daytime yeah. And that's why you went <laughs> right, because it never happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, always, oh, 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 you know, ST, 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 no, can, you know, and, and the respect was very much there from my character's point of view, yes. but from his, he, he took it from her. And that was yeah. why it was so devastating. And to watch it, you know, it, it gave, I'm not going to step on this because this is, I think this, again, this, this story was so great for you, Sonia, mm -hmm. that it, it, to, to give the, give the victim and the, the, the woman the opportunity to, to be the person who takes back her life rather than have, you know, oh honey, I'll take care of you. I'll do this. It really, my characters go, I'll step back. I'll give you the room, what you need. You do it, you guide it, it's your thing, right? I mean, I think that was why this story really resonated with so many people. Yeah. And it it didn't just have the rape element, it then had after that the HIV possibility. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, and that was powerful. And the fact that they brought in real HIV patients to yeah, play the Yeah, a gentleman, I forget his name. I forgot I his, forget name. his name too, and I, unfortunately I know he passed, but he was, a, a, so gracious and amazing and really giving information because I remember talking to him for a long time. What was it like Hours. when you found out? Oh, yeah. God, it was just so powerful. And he was such a good person and a great actor. He did a really phenomenal job. Yeah, and I thought it brought yeah. a lot of depth to it because it brought a reality to it. And he brought us into the reality of it. Yeah. And, and it Sonia, how difficult. Not... Go, ahead. Go ahead, Rick. Sorry. No, 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 no. It's, it's definitely was it was a brave move to have that many layers that you're bringing into it. It's like, you're not just bringing one highly social charged, like prevalent issue to light, right. but you're bringing another one on top of it. <laughs> and equally, it's like, oh, okay, how are we gonna do this? Um, yeah. So. yeah, I mean, there were, I mean, for, for you to play, I mean, it's kind of a dream, but also incredibly difficult. And, and yeah. I mean, can you talk about, you know, just, Filming the rape scene, you know, was that how you approached it's a that? It's so amazing to be here with you, Rick, and then to think back at that moment because suddenly I was just like, "Oh my God, I feel like I'm back there." Like that. It's like I suddenly had this wave of emotion. Yeah, um, it was it was powerful. It was really powerful, and it was, um, you know, to Guiding Light's credit, I think they just they did it with such respect too, even just in terms of the filming of it. You know, it was a very it was a close. Set. They closed that set that day, and Frank, yeah, right. to yeah. his credit, he was also like so right there. You know, he was trying to keep the character, but he was really—it was such a fine line of him mm -hmm. playing the character 
and making mm-hmm. sure I was okay, you know, and mm-hmm. me trying to, you know, maintain the character and be okay, you know, because it was yeah. such a huge and emotional day. Um, yeah, I remember that. I remember going home that night and just being like on the streets. Just every person that came back, I was really jumpy and yeah. oh, I was so close to get home and lock that door and just, you know, be. It was a, it was a difficult situation, you know, thing. But and you- I, I just have to say it was also one of the things that was so rewarding and probably one of the most rewarding experiences in my entire acting history was the day I got a letter from a girl who said she was raped. I was going to ask you. The day I was raped and the day I got help, she decided to go get help. Yeah. Wow. That yeah, I remember was that. I forgot, I forgot about that. huge. And there were lots of stories and lots of people pouring in with saying well, that, how that's that what I was going to say. I mean, you must have heard about rape, and then you must have heard about the possibility of HIV. People being, yeah. you know, you you must have really had some emotional letters during that that period. Yes, a lot. Uh, you really appreciated how the medium reached people, and I guess it was in their, you know, it's in their living rooms every day. We became mm-hmm. like real people, and so and people were really following along with the depth of the storyline. So. Uh, I think it it was both helpful in terms of people obviously getting help, which was so amazing and um, and emotional for everybody reliving it or going through it, including yeah, just, myself. Just to think that you <laughs> you know you you were going to work, you know, doing your job, but you in so many ways helped some people heal, you know, yeah, by, by you know. Uh, opening up and and sharing their story. Um, do you recall when you found out about the the switch of uh, you know when Brent died and then somebody telling you he was coming back as Marion Crane? I don't know. If, I, I, honestly, I don't remember whether they told him. Uh, towards he probably made you a makeup test. Right, didn't they? Because I remember yes, him coming it, it, in, yeah. and I think it was almost like an experiment to see if it was going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And it wasn't, and it was, it wasn't one of the uh, the staff makeup artists. Uh, it wasn't Joe no. Joe Bear, Joe Cola, or or oh, wow. Carlos Yegi, who was who was one of our uh, was a dear friend of mine mm-hmm. his uh, at yeah. the time as well, uh, which since passed. Um, but I, it was a. Robert, I want to say his name was. He was an incredible makeup artist. Like yeah, the, he was. The transformation. I remember everything that Frank had to go through. I remember that he had to. Um, they literally sent him hours. Yeah, to 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 oh, um, right. to school, right? Drag class, drag right. class. Basically. He oh he God, was, he was being, yeah. How to be able to be a man and a woman, you know, in a, in a woman's body. Of, Yes. Yeah, a woman in a man's body or whatever it is. But yeah, yes, know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. If we're the if if the if we're the audience, Guiding Light wanted us to believe it. Right. So yeah. Were, exactly. yeah. Exactly. And it and, was. And the audience did. We all know that. They bought it. They, they bought it. it. And that was the other thing. That's it. Was very hush hush. Nobody could know. Nobody could know that it was really Frank Beatty who would come back. You know, they were looking. You know, you go. What? It is looking. Like, <laughs> and we, they even had lines written in there. Was just like, it's not very pretty, is she? You know? <laughs> oh, don't be that way, Michael. That's terrible. That was me, right? I was like, yeah, it was. You were like, such a judge, such a judgmental guy. It's like, jeez, God. Um, but yeah, that yeah. was that was, yeah, that was pretty freakish. Um, that was pretty freakish. Um, some story. Um, Sonia, you, you've talked a little about Justin and Frank and Beth Ellers. Any any stories? What did you know? What do you think you learned from the Cooper family? <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I didn't actually work with Beth. My first day was her last day. Oh, um, yeah. It was, although I took over her apartment, which was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out nice. It worked out Wait, really great. In real life or on the, on the show? In real life. Took oh, over wow. her. Yeah, she still has time oh, left on her lease, so I, I moved in. <laughs> I forgot that. I forgot that. So, um, yeah, we had one look in the diner of kind of a familiarity, but that was all I ever worked with Beth. Um, oh, okay. And I think she left 
town, like literally left New York City. Yeah, she went to California, days. I think. Yeah. Right. So she moved out. I moved in. I think we, we had a couple of conversations and that was about all I ever really got to experience the best. Um, but, you know, Frank and Justin are like night and day. They're just, you know, Frank is a big teddy bear. He's just, he is like the big brother you want, right? He's just always there for you. He's, he's just a good guy. Sure. He's, okay. You could, what's that? He's always yeah. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Everything okay? You okay? Yeah. I mean, he was just so wonderful. And we just had a nice rapport. And Justin was hilarious and unpredictable and you know it was kind of invig you know invigorating and terrifying to work with him all at the same time because he brought out the best but you absolutely never knew what you were going to get <laughs> from day one and he would catch you like if you were starting to get into a thing oh he'd break that in a second you know that was when you'd get the headlock with the nogi or the throw me over the shoulder or any any random number of things Crazy. Yeah. I always, I always knew when, when Justin was like in a mode, Justin yeah. used to do this thing, it like, you barely see it, you never see it on camera, like his tongue on the inside of his mouth, his mouth would be barely open and his tongue would be going like that. It was the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen. But it's when Justin was like clicked in. Like yeah. he was so, he could go this way or this way. And it was, a. I, I used to love, when I saw that, I was like, oh, we're on. Like, and, <laughs> and he do some pretty incredible, like, way out there shit sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, he you did. And I, you know, would always be terrified because Rick and I, you know, we used to run lines a lot. So when it was helpful for me, anyway, I would love to run no, lines. No, you know me. I was never like, you know, oh, I don't want to run lines. No, I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah. And so we would do that all the time. But with Justin, you kind of got like your one run through. And he wasn't as if he wouldn't run it. But, you know, he didn't need it because he'd look at the page and he'd know it. And then, you know, it was like, OK, well, we're ready now. <laughs> That's what I heard. He would learn it like the morning of in a second. Uh, you know who else is no like that? Too. You know who else is like that? Uh, Nancy, Lee Grun. Nancy Lee Grun. Really? I don't know how uh, anomaly. It's just an anomaly. I've never wow. seen anything like it. It's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Nancy, you got this? Right on, word for word, you go. Wow. Good. Yeah, no, yeah. She's, same, way. same way. I wasn't That's that way. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was really I mean, glad that Rick was that way. You know, like, you know, I, I, I could do it. Not that quick. Not that quick. <laughs> think, you, yeah. think you could still do it that quick? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you might, Rick, because you've been no, doing no, more. I, no, my, yeah, my mem I, see, I, as a kid, that's I, that's all I did. I'm an only child. Um, you know, I, I grew up basically watching hours of classic television and movies and comics I used to listen to, and I'd repeat. I'd spew everything back. So, like, we were joking the other day, and my mom, uh, we were having Sunday dinner at her house, and um, she was telling my boys saying, you know, yeah, your father used to know this one, this one, uh, we were talking about old comics and Flip Wilson was a, a comic way back in the seventies, um, African American comic. And, uh, he used to do some bits and one bit was called the gardener. And it, it, it was a short bit, but it was sort of a repetitive bit that built one story on another and another and another. And I used to do that ad nauseum when I was 10 years old. And I did it for, I literally was able to do it at 55 now at the dinner table the other night. And my wow. mother shook her head and went, oh, God, just still, you know, it's like, I wish I <laughs> but that's why I think, you know, I, I just had this, my sense of memorization has always been, that's a muscle for me. And I just, sometimes it gets a little weaker. The older I've gotten, it's gotten a little weaker. Uh, but but by and large, I can I can still study dialogue pretty quickly. You have a great memory too, because even when we were talking on the phone, you just remembered the last time we saw each other. You you have it, a pretty good. Uh, well, it's, it's it's I get images in my head. I used to be able to remember names and uh, faces. Now it's more faces than names. Uh, occasionally they'll meet, but it's usually more. <laughs> <than that. laughs> hey, hey Sonia, Sonia, one of our fans, Matthew, said one of the most brilliant scenes was when Nadine was doing your nails and she told you how she was attacked. Do you remember that with Jean oh Carroll? Oh my gosh. 
Yes. She, she was telling you about her wow. attack at the wow. same time. I just got chills on that one. I do remember that. I, com I had forgotten it, so thank you for reminding me. Yes, that was, a, yes, so powerful. She was another great actress to work with. So I, fun I, and I, funny and just brilliant and always there, present. She was too. I swear to God, I've seen pictures of her recently. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I, mean, oh, I, I, I just had her on. She looks incredible. She looks uh, incredible. Um, and, you know, as much as everyone loved the, the the Brent Marion story, that's the only thing they hated the outcome yeah. because they loved Nadine so much. But that's yeah. you know just good storytelling. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You know. But yeah, she got she got the candelabra over the head. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I um, brought her back as a ghost when you hate opening that in your script. Get her angel, oh, right? Oh, oh yeah. 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 That in a script, yeah, not not a fun thing. Mm. Not a fun thing. Rick, talk about your family. And now you didn't work with Chris oh. Burneau, right? No, I did not. I did you not. You worked with Ron and, and not Beverly either, just Ron and Marge. So no, no, I, work, you, I did have the, the, the for, good fortune of working with Beverly. Oh, Actually, you did, great. Beverly was in my first couple of weeks when I first came to Guiding Light as well. Uh, Beverly, we had, I, I adored Beverly. I loved working with, I loved work, I loved Marge. Marge was a completely different, uh, sort both, of a, both of them broads. Yes, broads. Yeah. Broads. Marge had this sort of mental flair about her, and Bev was just balls. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, like she came to a room and you were like, oh, you know, it's, you had to be on your game. Uh, but Bev was also such a great mentor to so many of us. Uh, me being a you know 25, 26 year old actor when I got there. Um, you know, she, the first, my first time I did a scene with her, I was, I got a, um, uh, what do you call, um, uh, Blake was faking being pregnant and then she had to fake having a miscarriage to tell me that she had a miscarriage. <laughs> so she called me on the phone and I, you know, I'm all, I'm bawling my eyes out. I mean, it's completely, I'm just heaving on the phone and I hang up and they call, you know, lock goes clear like that. And, um, and Bev goes. She goes, oh, the fucking kid can act like that. She's, she's so taken by the fact that I you know, uh, could actually pull it off. But yeah, Bev was, was great. Um, um, but uh, Ron, my Ron, my dear Ron. Um, love it. <laughs> there's there's yeah. no one like Mr. Raines. There's no one. There, there is it. Nobody and like there's, no one, there's no one like a voice like Mr. Raines either. No, no. Oh, I so true. Here. No, Ron was great. It took a while because I was so, I was so, you know, spunky and Ron was just very, Ron had his, his, like everything was always, excuse me, things coming. Um, Ron always had everything ordered exactly as he needed it. He was a very, um, just Broadway actor, like knew what was happening, when, where, how, could roll with anything, like never flustered, none of it. And like, that's the thing I was, and I was always like, oh, try, try to play this way. He's like, yeah, all right, then that's fine, yeah, good. <laughs> um, and for the first time, you know, it was very odd for me later on uh, years when I actually saw Ron not wearing fluffy. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, and he had many fluffy ones. Oh, that's fluffy one, and that's fluffy two. Um, no, I adored Ron. Um, he, was, he was such a different, um, you know, it's funny, and, and I say this, not I say this because you as the actor have a different perception on what you think your father, your the character you'll be playing opposite is going to be. But then you have to take into account that somebody else is going to be playing that. And then you have to find a way to take what your creation of that character is in your mind and marry it with what the vision of the, the writers and this particular actor playing it is gonna be. And you have that's when you have to check your ego. And that was my check um, because it, it was not, um, Ron was not who I thought Alan was gonna be. But then the more I watched him play it, the more I realized, no, that's who he, of course he is. And I was looking for this other side of him that was, you know, uh, um, much more uh, that had a vulnerability to him and all of that. It was like, no, 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 you're not writing the story. And that would be the wrong way to go. So that the more that 
the more I got to play with Ron, the more it fueled why my character would rage against the machine constantly and was always the also ran in the in the Spalding, you know, uh, um, clan of, of boys uh, and whatnot. So, um, and, and I I just <laughs> I just used to adore Ron because he, like I said, he never he could he would never break not for anything never break. No, he didn't. <laughs> So I saw him in uh, a little night music a um, few years back when he was doing the tour. And I was so happy. I got a chance to go backstage and actually see him. And he toured me around, come here. This is my son right here. This year. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Hey, Rick, uh, Cammy was asking, because um, she's a Texas girl, where in Texas you got married? Uh, Plano. PLA in Plano, Texas. It's also where I graduated high school. Wow. New York boy who moved down to Texas in 76 and then uh, graduated in 82, went to UT in Austin uh, till 84, promptly blew out of there, uh, made a lot of great friendships. I have some of my, my lifelong friendships that I have uh, from Texas. That's uh, so but, funny. My husband's from uh, Texas and went to UT, maybe at the same uh, time. Austin? <laughs> in Austin, yeah. What year? I'm trying to think. Is he my age? Because you're younger than I am. He's a couple younger than. Are you younger than me? No, you're younger than me. I mean, <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, he's a little, he's a little younger than me, so he must have been before your time. Then. Oh, but uh, still, you see, but not time. by much. Yeah. No, he had to be after his time. Um, and after our, his time. Right. I'm getting all these. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Later. Sorry. Um, but yes, you see, Austin. Sonia, Tara was asking about uh, Lucy's rivalry with Hart's sister Julie with um, Jocelyn Seagrave. Oh, that was so much. Oh. Fun. Was it fun working with Jocelyn? It was great. She played a really great bad girl. She, uh, I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> I used that scene on a reel for the longest time. Some big fight that I had with Jocelyn. <laughs> it was hilarious. She was really great, but she's such a nice person too. So it's oh, like yeah. really obvious. You have this like, you know, cat fight, you and know, then all of a sudden be like, hey, you want to go have a, let's go for drinks or let's go dinner, you know? Opposite. Complete <laughs> opposite. Oh, she actually, you know that she, Jocelyn, actually married Melina's. Third or fourth, fourth cousin? I didn't really? know that, but I, I knew she married a Greek because her last name. Ted Fundukos. Fundukos, right? Yes. yes. Two beautiful. Right. Ah, that's so cool. Wow. Yeah, no, she was fun. She was. She played a really great bad girl, and that was a nice little rivalry. We definitely had a a, a thing. Do you have a favorite scene that the two of you, you know, or a favorite? thing from Guiding Light that the two of you shared. And so it's a I'm two-parter. The one that was my favorite because it was the one I hated the most too. Which and, one? And, and, and then a difficult one. Something that was difficult for you guys. So a two-parter. Uh, well, okay. Rick, you thought of something. So go ahead with the funny yeah, one. So my favorite and one that I most hated. Um, so Alan, Michael, and Lucy are finally together. They're going to get married. And we were told. Do you know what this is? I think so. Yeah. Oh, God. And it didn't have anything to do with the wedding. <laughs> yep. uh, we were told, uh, we're going, uh, we're, you're going to go on a remote. Now, back in the day, that's when a remote was when you obviously, for those who don't know, a remote is when you get to go to another city, usually, sometimes tropical, sometimes, you know, <laughs> Nights and fun. And I was fun. going to ask about that. Right. So I'm glad you're talking kids, about it. <laughs> whatever, right? So uh, I'm like, I'm stoked. I'm like, I'm, and mind you, I'm towards the end of my contract. I'm about to leave. I've already mm -hmm. announced. So I'm like, oh boy, get to go out with a bang. So you we're going to go. We, we get a remote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, um, so I said, where, where, where's the remote? And they said, Universal Studios, <laughs> Orlando. <laughs> you said Universal, yeah, Universal Studios in Orlando. 
That's where the wedding is going to be. Yes. <laughs> also the honeymoon. What was the reason? Well, that was going to be at Epcot. <laughs> Why? And they were like, well, it was obviously for publicity and there was a deal yeah. in place in the last between P and G, I believe, and, and the network and whatnot. And we're on the plane and I, uh, it was a surprise for Lucy. Alan Michael's gonna surprise Lucy. So we're sitting on the plane, you know, the faux plane, you got the faux clouds going by and the lights, and you know, you're not really going anywhere. And, ah, my private jet, oh, I'm so rich. <laughs> so Alan Michael, where are we going? You could just, just, just build up, where are we going? <laughs> Lucy, you. Universal Studio. Oh God, I can't say it! I can't say it, please! Why? Like, Rick, you have to say it, please. You just have to <laughs> no, I am a billionaire! Why? I don't even get the park! I don't get it! Rick, it's the network for studio. I, 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 please, please, why? Please don't make me say it. Just like overdrive or something. Or like, are we doing it both? Like, no. I must have done it what, Sonia, like four or five times. You and did. I, that you was my worst scene that I ever had <laughs> with you, ever. Anything else? The rape stuff? Would you know any? You know, first time that they actually kiss or all of that? You know, the wonderful romantic stuff and the playful stuff. Ah, <laughs> that one. That one. Hey, but that's believing in your character. He's a billionaire. Oh, boy. That would be, oh. that would be the last place you'd be going. Poor Roy Steinberg. Poor Roy Steinberg. He had to be, <laughs> I know. He had to be on the receiving end of my freaking nonsense. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's a genius. Yeah. Well, and it kind of continued that way. I mean, we did yeah. our vows. I just saw that wedding scene, which I have to oh. say looks so stunning. It really looks beautiful. Yeah. But doing it, it was we're on, we're on top of the like, yeah, like movie we're theater. So high. We're and we were up. married. Actually, if you remember, we were also married by my my lifelong friend who I actually studied with in New York, Russ right. Blackwell. He yes. was and he got yes. so he's a bad, I haven't seen him for years. And all of a sudden we show up on the day. And I say, oh, this is the priest. I turned, I went, Russ, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> he, lives in, he still lives in Orlando, by the way. No kidding. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. He had three seasons. Okay. He did, he's done very well. He's very, very successful in his own right. Um, phenomenal actor. Phenomenal actor. But That's what a crazy fantastic. thing. What a crazy thing. So 4.30 in the morning, we are fine. And it's freezing, you know, so much for like the, the yeah. elegant beach thing and the fancy romantic Chap wedding. Chap <laughs> lip. Like they're putting freaking, uh, what do you call, Carmex on me so I don't look like, you know, like I, 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 I've got typhoid or something. I'm just like. <laughs> I'm freezing. I'm like 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 this. Jesus Christ, would you stop licking your fucking lips, please? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! And that yeah. So I think we finished at four thirty, and then we had to go film. So I think we had maybe an hour, two hours to rest, yeah. and then we went to Epcot. We had to film some happy scenes, running around, running around, around like this was oh, the greatest look, thing it's ever. Oh, Mexico, oh, Italy, you know. Oh god! <laughs> help me. Oh god! But uh, I think one of the oh, most. Um, Sweet scenes, and I was sort of because Rick, also you were just being such a just kind gentleman, you know, because Lucy had a rough start to her whole like sexuality and everything, <laughs> being raped and everything. So finally, finally, when we had our very first love scene, and love scenes are always not at all romantic because they're like states and you're awkward and you got like an elbow and you're red. <laughs> Yeah. Like, look really about, comfortable and happy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. Exactly. Crazy. They're staring at these things. They actually closed that, that too. They closed that. They made it really intimate. It was really beautiful. You came that day. You brought a rose. It was just like so sweet. It was just like this. See, you're just such a sweet person. But he was. He was very. That was a very like. I don't know, it just felt very- I think there was more, you know, and I think back then, quite honestly, it's, um, there was much more 
I think we had we all uh, uh, everyone in the cast, and I think in all of the shows at that time, there was such a uh, uh, an adoption uh, of our own personalities with our characters with each other that it was such a tight family. Like it was. We we really you think about those kind of things. It's like you know you see these people every single while we're sh people out there are, are viewing us every single day. We're seeing each other every single day. We're seeing each right. other more than we're seeing our own families, you know, right. at times um, for sure. Yeah. So, um, but it was, and I, I think it's especially on guiding light. I, I have to say yeah. having, yeah. you know, yeah. worked on other sets, I think that was an exceptional group of people that really Absolutely. deeply cared about each Absolutely. other. And yeah. so that was really, was that was a, Sweet time. I think the, the other time that I always laugh at was when uh, Baby Marina, or Baby Marina, oh, in real life, that was probably not a very good happy story. <laughs> oh, and you had to do the babysitting? I was babysitting and this whole sweet scene where I'm like, baby Marina, you're gonna be your aunt and I'm all these things and I'm like really saying, and then she throws up. She literally turns her face to camera and vomits straight yeah. into the camera. <laughs> and there's like, cut, okay, we gotta cut for lunch. Time's so I'm like, what? You're gonna keep that? Oh, and they God. actually do. We'll get it. We'll so. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. It's gonna be, yeah, exactly. It was, yeah. Oh. That will always be my relationship with baby Marina, her vomiting and checking out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The best. Kids and dogs just can't do scenes with kids and dogs. Yeah, so true. So funny. Rick, you have to share um, your winning the daytime Emmy story. For, for GL, yeah. Um, for Guiding Light. Yeah, that was... Um, I know you've got so many of them now. <laughs> no, 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 no. no that's, that's, that's what I will tell you. I'll tell you that was the most memorable. It was the most memorable one because it was the first. Two because um, my twelve, so, twelve hours earlier or what was it? Twenty twenty two hours, uh, almost to the moment. Uh, my oldest son, who is now twenty nine, Nicholas, uh, was born, and um, I, I went to the Marriott Marquis, which is where it was was at, um, with my mom, and obviously I couldn't go. With my wife was supposed to be going. She was uh, in the hospital because she had a C-section. And um, my father, who is since past, he's, he's passed almost 20 years. But my dad, who you know, I had kind of an estranged relationship with over the course of the years, um, he was there the morning that Nicholas was born, or the evening, excuse mm -hmm. me, that Nicholas was born. He was there the whole day. And my mom happened to be in town. She was in on business, so she flew in for the birth. She, we knew kind of what was going to come around that time. Um, and uh, so my dad uh, uh, and my mom, who had been divorced since I was six, they were in the audience together. Um, I was, people were coming up to me like, you know, Rick, are you excited about tonight? We were all at the cocktail party. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm a dad. Yeah, I'm a dad. I'm just like, <laughs> all I think is I want to get back to the hospital to, yeah. you know, see my little boy and my wife and everything. And the hysterical thing is, you know, they, I'm sitting there and they're about to call your name and that, that level of I've got a pee rises in you. Um, <laughs> and you know, I can't go at all. And uh, they called my, and it was Melissa Reeves and it was Katie McLean were presenting. Oh, wow. Uh, so, and they both had these big hairdos that they had. I think they had, you know, like falls put on and whatever. Um, but, uh, Katie announced it and said, Rick Hurst. And I just flew out. I was bowled blow, over. I stood up, ran up to the stage, and there were two trophy girls uh, from different shows. One of them was Parker Posey. Oh, and, the other, wow. and the other one who handed me mine, who was on our show, was Nia Long. Oh, oh, very uh, cool. uh, Nia hands me, I give Nia a big hug and a kiss. And, um, and I just was good. So the the uh, the promotional thing. That's a, that's you know, a pretty good twenty two yeah. hour period. I mean, yeah, yeah. I can't beat that. Thing, no, I really can't. The the, yeah, the promotional thing at the time, Alan, was like this thing called where Clarence. There was this this. Oh, this yeah. guy, who gets the gold? Who gets the gold? Really <laughs> horrible white person can not rap. Uh, so I would make fun of this thing. Like every time I would see it come on, I'm like, 
who gets the gold? Who gets the gold? It's like no rhythm at all. And they announced when I got up there, I just was so blown away. I just came into my head. I went, oh, God, I went, I got the gold. I got the gold. So that was a big thing. So that was that was my 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 big deal, uh, my first speech, and I was I was blown away. And then I then I announced the, the hospital that my wife was in, and uh, immediately the switchboard lit up. Everybody tried to call into her room, and then they shut it down so that when I called to tell to say, "Hey, I'm on my way, honey," they wouldn't let me through because they. Thought, <laughs> no. uh, yeah, I said no. This is her husband. They were like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." So, oh my god. Oh, I went yeah. the biggest bouquet to my wife after that. Uh, and, that and, and, and Sonia, you have two kids as well, right? I do. Yeah. I have a 15 year old daughter and a 12 year old son. And any um, hint of them following in mom's acting footsteps? I don't know. I, sometimes I see a little bit in my son, you know, at first he was like, no, no, no. But occasionally he'll, he'll act in a few or small roles in some of my husband's productions. But I think if anybody, he's, he's the ham of the family. That's so uh, my daughter is like tall. I don't know where she gets that from because neither of us are very tall. <laughs> She's like five, eight, you know, she could be a, a runway model. She's gorgeous. And she definitely has that capacity. But uh, I think, if I'm putting bets on it, it would be my son. And, and your One Life to Live role was before Guiding Light, right? No, it came after. Yeah. So you so you yeah. played Sweet Sweet Lucy and then a psycho nurse after. Exactly. I got to play my bad guy. After all the things that poor Lucy went through, I got to like That's awesome. get the gun and take a couple people out. Yeah. Who did who did you get to work with at One Life? Actually, you know what was really cool was um that was when Michael, to come full circle to Michael uh, Zazlo. Yeah. Michael Zazlo had been like, oh, from Guiding Light, and they hired him to do the ALS story yeah. on One Life to Live, and I was his nurse. <laughs> so, I mean, that really is. That's why. Isn't that pretty cool? That was a pretty yeah. wild turn to go back and do that. That was really, that was, huh. that was a neat experience. That was, I was nice to him. Everybody else, that is everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's good, but that's I mean, let's talk about yeah, that's a really odd full circle right there. It was a very <laughs> odd full circle. I'd had a weird experience with that with or interaction because my best acting teacher at the time had passed away from ALS the weekend before the Monday that uh, I was going in to play Michael Zaslow's nurse. It was very bizarre, but. That, that's yeah. interesting because, you know, at the time of Michael's, you know, I mean, that disease ha had been around, but you really didn't hear that many yeah. right. consecu consecutive because I, I've had a few in the last couple of years where it's definitely much more prominent that I know. But back right. then, that's really shocking that you knew too. Cause of, back to back yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. With yeah. Yeah, it's such a horrible a disease. Hard, hard. Horrible. Rick, fans would uh, shoot me if I didn't ask about GH and working with Maurice and Nancy Lee Graham. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you heard already with Nancy. Nancy's uh, Nancy's Nancy's a, a she's she's a she's a party. She's a party. <laughs> uh, a great party to be with. Some party, sometimes not. Wait, no. have, have you uh, seen what have you seen what she's done online? Uh, constant. She's, no, no, she's doing um, something right now called, I think, a COVID support group. Yes, 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 I did, I saw, I saw that. I saw an episode with Kim Zimmer, Jane Elliott, Nancy, and yeah. somebody else. It was very and, funny. You know, you know, it's great that Nancy's on GH, but Nancy is 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 a prolific writer. She's a brilliant lady. Um, she, she's an incredible activist. Um, she's got so many hats. Like, it's like, why are you still in daytime? Like, you know, <laughs> it's great that you're doing that, hon, but you've got like, you've got purpose elsewhere that you can actually go do something with um, uh, beyond, you know, obviously playing uh, Alexis. No, I, I loved working with Nancy. Um, Nancy actually, and I say this all the time, I mean, she'll, she'll tell you, you know, the first time we started working together, never have two actors that work so differently um, and that actually light up together. Um, Nancy and I used to get flat fucking arguments, like, you know, uh, just yelling and like, and, and it was me yelling, not her. Uh, but um, but uh, the funny thing is that when now 
you know, it's 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 fine. It's coming that that understanding where when you have people that come from two different points of view, completely different points of view coming in, um, that's going to do this. But somehow we figured it out, and uh, and she's awesome. And Mo, Mo's Mo is like a real brother to me. He's he's a uh, you know, first time I met Maurice was uh, you know I came in. Um, into the makeup room and he was sitting there and kind of, you know, everybody's, he's, he is kind of like the Don, uh, there, like, uh, you know, all roads lead to sunny, not as much anymore. He's kind of mellow <laughs> uh, as we've all gotten older, but, but Mo was sitting there and a lot of people around, he was chatting in the makeup room and, um, I just kind of weeded my way through the crowd and just kind of re reached out and leaned forward. I said, Hey Maurice, I said, I'm Rick. I said, just wanted to let you know, I'm really excited to start working with you. You know, and he just kind of looked me in the eye, looked him in the eye. It was just like, okay, good. Like I wasn't, I wasn't, I wouldn't shirk from it, but at the same time, I wasn't there to go like, Hey, I'm the shit. You know, it's like, look, I'm here to do some really great work and you're a fantastic actor. And let's make some, let's, you know, make, make some good moments. And, um, and so that's, that's kind of our, our whole, the way our whole relationship was. Uh, we both challenged each other uh, and, and lifted each other up at the same time. So, uh, he's 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 a solid man. He's just unique, and uh, um, again, kind of like Justin in that way. You don't know you don't know what you're gonna get. Sometimes you're like, oh, "Where's he going?" Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> that's got to be keep you yeah. keep you keep you on the edge of your seat. So oh, I know, you know a lot of fans. You know, were, were sort of curious. So Rick, when you left, you you had chose to leave Guiding Light. I did. I did. Yeah. You know, it, it was one of those things that um, I had been there for six years and, you know, uh, there was, there were challenges, you know, I wanted to kind of have with the character and it, I felt like it had come full circle. He came in, he was kind of like uh, sort of the, the, uh, the kind of hero, young little boy. And I took him through his, his growing period. Uh, that journey of, of growing up and becoming a man. He came in as, as, as a young, you know, sort of adolescent or an older adolescent and became a young man and then got sort of the life that he probably, he would have wanted. And I felt like that was it. And I didn't know where else to go. And, and Michael Labson was the, 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 the executive uh, producer, producer at the time. And, you know, uh, I didn't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff and it wasn't anything. It was just their vision of where they wanted to go. A lot of the, uh, the writers that I had worked with prior and Jill was there. It, it was just such a, 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 a moment in time that I didn't want to, I felt like at that time, if I didn't leave then I was 31, if I didn't leave then and go out there and, you know, sort of quote, sell your oats and see what's out in the, in the, in the pool of, of uh, the acting world. Um, and try nighttime, not try nighttime, but see if you can get in. Where was I supposed to go past that? Um, I felt like I would never do it, and uh, and did. You know, went out and got some work here and there. But um, I, I purposely remained out of daytime for because I got a call to go to General Hospital. Coincidentally, um, about a year after I left Guiding Light, to replace uh, Sean Kanan as AJ, um, and uh, I declined. I said, no, I said, thank you. I appreciate it respectfully though. I'm just, that's not ready. And boy, that would have been a hell of a role. Uh, but again, I wasn't ready to do that. And, and, uh, after a few years, I found my way back to, you know, CBS and young and the restless was, that's where I kind of flipped the switch. I went from being like, you know, sort of a bad boy ish and gotting light at times, but not really to, playing, you know, a three-time serial rapist on YNR, replacing uh, Eddie Cibrian's, uh, you know, created the role. Uh, mm. And uh, it was one of those moments where as an actor, it's I, like I said about Frank, I just committed and fell forward with it. And uh, hysterically, like I was gone and they of course came to me, Ed Scott came to me six months later and said, you know, we gotta let you go. And I said, hey man, it's been a great run, loved it. Last longer than I thought. Then, Two months later, they called me to come back after I died horrifically. One of the greatest deaths. Of course, come, come yeah. back from the dead. <laughs> oh yeah, but no, I didn't come back from the dead. I was a, I was an aberration. In, oh uh, okay. In, in uh, Saber and Janae's uh, mind, so I was her ghost for another 
six months. So I got six months more work out of it. It's awesome. Right. Well, that's, that's always fun. Yeah. yeah. So, Sonia, had they written you out or had you chosen? I think, I don't know. I recall. also actually chose to go. Uh, I don't know, so maybe similar reasons. I, I, For me, I think it was more personal. I think at that point I felt like if I was ever gonna try and go do mm -hmm. something else, that was the time Rick had left, things had changed. It just, it wasn't kind of the same. And uh, yeah, at that point, I, unlike you, Rick, didn't have kids or, you know, or I wasn't married or anything. So there really wasn't anything holding me. So I felt like that was, right. that was the time. No. Oh, I, you know, I appreciate you being honest about it because I know, you know, fans loved, you know, Lucy and Alan Michael. So it's it's good for them to hear that. Sonia, talk about what you're doing now. How did you get into being a mind body coach and motivational speaker? I find it, <laughs> you know, it's really interesting. Yeah. Well, I think in being an actor, you're constantly um pressed up against uh, adversity, right? And a lot of rejection. <laughs> Eight brain tests later, it took me. Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> I studied a lot of motivational stuff. I had coaches before anybody knew what a coach was. I actually was pretty lucky. I, my very first coach was Tony Robbins, head coach. Um, and oh, we wow. became really great friends, yeah. And uh, actually I worked with him right before I got Guiding Light, probably was part of the reason why I did, did get that. but. Anyway, uh, I just was always really interested in it. And uh, so I kind of kept going with it. And then when I had my daughter and wasn't really acting very much, I decided to, I became, I'd studied it so much, I became the person people would ask questions. And so I thought, well, maybe I'll just study this and actually do this. So I got certified and then I was coaching and acting. And then I got into speaking, um, sort of fast tracked on speaking and was speaking to organizations and whatnot about mindset. And somewhere in that whole thing, I uh, came up with uh, the modus size, which is sort of this at the core of what I do right now, which is a hybrid of exercise and mindset. So it's an exercise process that's put into um, a coaching process into exercise. And it's really designed around the idea that when you exercise, your brain is wide open, it's focused, it's clear, you can, uh, it's more creative, and it's a really great time to tap that body intelligence. So all those answers that are within you, but usually get blocked with your thinking. <laughs> so um, you're prompted with all of that to sort of unleash that and help you become the greatest person you can be. So. That's do you, what I'm doing now. Oh, <laughs> do, you, do you have, a, there's a bug. Do you have a typical uh, client? Typical client. So I have a variety of clients actually. Um, I So no, I can't say that I have typical Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know like, yeah, I was curious. I have, a, I have sort of, I would say uh, two, two sides of it because one side are people that are looking to change. They're, they're sort of feeling stuck. They're wanting to get out of what they're doing. They're wanting to break open. There's something else. They're feeling like, I know I'm meant to do more. I just don't know what. Or I know I'm meant to do more and I'm struggling with how to get there. So that's sort of the one core group. Oh, nobody I was working with. Has that nobody core. has that feeling. And then I have an executive coaching branch, which is more entrepreneurs, people who have chosen, but you know, they're in highly competitive things and constantly having to reinvent and recreate and deal with all sorts of life family balance issues and all the things that come with being an entrepreneur. So that's sort of another subset of people that I talk it's, to. It's and fascinating. It's so freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Very I cool. do love it. I really do love it. I love, love when people so go that, for their that, dreams, that, right? And make it happen. And it's amazing to see people see progress. The, see the space, by the way, that's bright and alive and smiling. This is the face that I always saw. <laughs> no, never, no, honey, I never saw you. You, you it, it's so beautiful to see when you find people find their their purpose you know mm. and I, I i i've been watching and following you and you're just you're so committed it, it just it just links up and matches who you are so well I'm it's so, kind of yeah. so reward so rewarding to to just help people see that in themselves 
I love that. There's nothing yeah. more exciting when someone comes back and says, I got this, or I did this, or I achieved yeah. this. Or I'm like, yes, sure. you can do it because I believe that I get a little passionate. That everybody is capable of so much more and we get in our own ways. And so when you start we to unlock that, and you guys, and we all need help at some point. And so that being that person to help facilitate that and get them to the other side is really exciting. And it's I have some like, really kick-ass clients right now that are just rocking. And so every day I'm just like, yes. <laughs> I mean, I have like a little dance parties over here for them. So it's very cool. Awesome. And Rick, talk about your acting first and then Nana's uh, family kitchen. Yes. Uh, so um, I moved here. Obviously, everybody knows I moved here to Atlanta. Um, you know, I kind of was. What brought I, you to Atlanta? Yeah. Your family, right? Your family? No, no. Well, yes. There, I didn't have family here that, that, in answer to that part of the question. Oh, okay. but so no. I, 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 my family's always been with me. My mom, uh, my mother-in-law, both of them are widowed, have been widowed for a few years. My, my stepfather uh, passed away tragically in, in 20, 2012. Um, um, and um, he actually committed suicide, which was, you know, it's not something. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. I wow. Yeah, it's, it was okay. very, very tragic. Um, uh. It's And it was, you know, I've always been, as Sonia would probably attest to as well, regardless, I could have my edge and I can be super passionate, but I'm always looking, how can I, how can I, how can I? I've always been that way. And in 2012, I felt something broke uh, after my stepdad, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I suicide. Um, it really hit me at my core. Like, and I had just left, um, um, what do you call, um, uh, Bold and Beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. And then right at the same time, you know, because I wasn't now working on a show, my agent at the time was like, yeah, well, oh, thanks so much. All that money, bye-bye, click. So I basically had an FU, I had an FU moment to the business and to the industry. I was like, yeah, whatever, I'm out. Uh, so 2012, I started to think in my head, I'm like, do I need to be here? No, in LA? No, I don't need to be here. But it didn't actually continue because I got called back to guy, uh, uh, General Hospital uh, in 2014, did a few stints there, whatnot. We move here. I, I, I get on the phone with Natalia Livingston, who played Emily on on, uh, on General Hospital. Uh, and Natalia and I have been, have been good friends for a couple of years. And I said, you know, um, tell me about Atlanta. Like, so much has been happening here in Atlanta. So I decided, right. okay, let me go check it out. I flew out here, um, stayed with her and her then boyfriend, now husband. And um, she's just, she's like, oh, here, here's some wine and some cheese. You'll love it in Atlanta. I'm like, get your foot off my back, sweetie. I'm not <laughs> in the South. I've lived in the South. I'm not really down for it. I'm an East Coast boy. I want to go there or I'm going to go to the other coast. And, you know, the weather was just right. It was the end of October. It was rain. There was leaves falling. I just, you know, the nostalgia of what I grew up with was here. I said, okay, I came out. Um, and while I was here, you know, she had started a company called Actor Boutique. And, um, you know, I, I knew that I'd started to coach a little bit with other uh, actors in L.A. And in the same vein, uh, Sonia, as your clients feel with you, um, I was getting feedback from a lot of the clients or from managers that were saying, what did you do with them? Like they like something clicked in and they were off to the races. Like they brought something to their work that I've never seen. Like it, it, before I watched them acting and then I was watching them not like living, like actually living in the park. And I was like, uh, you know, it's just, I try to approach, I try to, I try to, I try to help them see what they can see from their own eyes in the way that I see that they can see it. If that makes sense. So, and I, I, uh, so when I got here to Atlanta, I just, I started coaching. I started working with Natalia and then, um, you know, I basically felt like that's something I could do here. I wound up working more. I have worked more here, uh, in, in different, guest spots and films, you know, a couple of independent films since I've been here that I did in LA. And it was well, Atlanta is such, so everybody knows is a huge filming uh, mm -hmm. arm. Yeah. You know, so, much, so much of what we all currently watch on all the streaming platforms and on the yes. networks are filmed in Atlanta. Every time you turn around, it's like, you know, if it's Netflix, definitely, it's probably shot here. Look at the end of everything, like Stranger Things, you know, there was the Georgia yeah. Peach right at Georgia Film Commission. Uh, there's a lot of uh, money behind it here, and obviously they get the tax incentives, and it's great. Um, so I, I decided to, uh, you know, my personal 
uh, when I coach with folks, um, they can go to the selfmadeactor.com, obviously. Um, it's mostly in person. I haven't been really coaching because uh, I that much recently because I prefer one-on-one. -on -one. The virtual thing's okay. I can do it, but my time really is much more um, uh, focused on my family's business. And that came about uh, in the same sort of way. You know, you get to a new space, you look around, you go, hey, everything is wide open for me. Um, I have an I have an opportunity to make a new chapter in my life, and you know my mother has been since retired from corporate uh, cosmetics. Uh, she was with that uh, business for many many years, high level executive with a very um, uh, exclusive company called Sicily, and um, she started with that company and finished up, and you know she was retired. We were all moving out here, and um, we're walking through farmers markets. Farmers markets here are huge, foodie town, big foodie town. Uh, besides barbecue, they actually have more food than that here. Um, and we're walking nothing wrong with barbecue. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with it. Don't we have? There's I a love lot. it. <laughs> There's a, they a lot of it. Um, and I, so we're going through the markets, and people are selling all kinds of wares. And you know, my mom's looking around. And she's going. My mom's an incredible cook. Has been my whole life. Like I make the joke that you, she could have like a radish, you know, a bottle of ketchup, you know, uh, three onions and like you know soda water, and she can make a four course meal. It's like you know <laughs> that that good. Sonia's had her food before. Um, mm -hmm. So She's that good. Uh, yeah. So so she said, I bet you I could sell my sauce. And in my little entrepreneurial brain, popped up and I went, okay. And we had an intent of like, yeah, let's see a little thing. Um, but we realized in order to get into the better markets, you had to have a better license. So we got the commercial uh, uh, food license and had to get into a commercial kitchen, um, you know, commit and kind of go all in. So we formed a company uh, and Nona is uh, Italian for grandmother. So um, we've done some catering in, in California, um, actually for GH <laughs> from time to time. <laughs> And I'd literally finish my scenes and then throw on my little, you know, chef's bib and go downstairs and start serving. And everybody's like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, it's my family's company. So uh, we just kind of took it to a set next level when we got here. And, um, you know, for the past four years, it's continually grown. And uh, while uh, I, I can honestly say I've never worked harder in my life um, at 55, I mean, I feel like I, I, I'm adopting my, my father's uh, working class um, persona. Uh, later in life, and I, I don't know why that is, because it's not like my creative bug is gone. You know, I still uh, get a great deal of uh, enjoyment and pleasure from uh, from working as an actor. Um, I get more enjoyment by coaching folks, um, and you know, eventually, who knows, writing, directing their scripts that are half started, of course. But mm -hmm. um, that's uh, well, you're you're in a great city for that. You're in a great city yeah, for that. Yeah. So it's it's great. You know, Nona's Family Kitchen was born, and you know we're we're we continue to grow. Um, we um, we're getting we're, we we keep getting like I got another five star review on Google today. Happy customers. You know, it's super simple. Uh, it's I'm gonna. Great. I have to contact my sister. Her uh, husband's two sisters live live in Atlanta. I'm gonna tell them to check it out. Absolutely. Do you sell online, Rick? Is it, mm -hmm. or is you it do. You know, I, I or? Yeah, yeah. It's primarily markets and then pick up uh, um, from our location and delivery, which is we do is is primarily. Um, where you know the whole shipping of the frozen entrees is tough because yeah. of price, um, and we we sort of we thrive on the fact that we make our food, uh, it's restaurant quality at a, at a grocery store price. It's really very mm -hmm. affordable. Uh, and it's what, there's no preservatives in anything we do. Um, we use only imported stuff. We get all of our cheese from Jersey. So I get Yay. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, a uh, great company. Jersey great company work. Yeah, a company we work with called Leone Latticini. It's another, it's a family owned company. They've been making cheese for 40 years and we hooked up with where, them. And they're, where are they in New Jersey? Do you know? They're in Union. They're in oh, yeah, yeah. That's, very, okay. very close. That's very close to me. Yeah, I'm telling you, go, go by there. It's outstanding. The the GM uh, um, is known. Uh, his name is Joseph uh, Verga. Uh, really outstanding individual. Really, really good guy. Uh, but you know, we work with them, and and we we want to. We really bring in a level of quality. I think to Atlanta Italian. You know, that has not been seen. And uh, you know, got a lot of big things 
and plant and store for it. But the the, the shipping part is using dry ice. The, the, the pricing on that is a little challenging, but it's still, it's definitely something I know. I've had more people in California from all over the country. They all want to get the food. You can't get the sauce. We can't ship the okay. sauce. Um, that's a, that's absolutely, absolutely possible. But the rest of it is, is fine. I mean, I, at this age now I, I make pizza. Like I become like, uh, uh like a, a, a pizza <laughs> Nazi. Um, <laughs> like all of the pizzas are made and thrown fresh. I get my dough from Brooklyn. Um, our sauces are made fresh. The cheese they're throwing in there, you know. That's awesome. Wow. You're, you're making me You're, you're making know. me very hungry. <laughs> sure. um, Sonia, Blake, Blake said um, he's going to check out your, I think he, Blake, I assume Blake, it could be a girl, was going to check out your business. And we, got a, and we got a hello yeah. from Italy for both of you that Lucy and Alan Michael were their oh. favorite couple from oh. Italy. Hello, Italy. <laughs> That was so cool. I was actually in Turkey with my mom, and there was a busload of Italian school kids, and they thought, they saw me, and they were like, Lucy! I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in Turkey. That's in so Turkey. wild. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. But, you know, when I went Italian. to, when I, when so I went cool. to, remember when I, I, when Nikki was 18 months, my, my oldest, uh, the family, you know, me, mom, my stepdad, and, and, and my wife, we all went to Italy uh, for the first time, for me, and visited my mom's town where she was brought up. And I walked into a classroom of one of our cousins who was a teacher there, walked into her classroom. When I walked into the classroom, guys, <laughs> all these mop. stood up and started crawling. <gasps> I started crawling because <laughs> it, like, I'm, not, I'm not a dignitary, but it was the fact that it was like a hometown boy. Yeah. Food, like Aww. a big Huge there, and still is. Still Huge. is. It is. So it's so Sen cool. Sentieri. 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 Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I can't tell you how much fun I had today. I thank you both. Alan, so much. Thank, thank you. you both so here. much. Fans, we thank you for tuning in today. Thank you so much. So good to see you all. Rick and Sonia, stay there for a minute. I'll sign off and we'll go from there. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I will see you. Uh, see you next week and have a great weekend. Bye, everybody.